I'm just okay. trying to throw my computer I almost broke your now. computer. I'm sorry. You know, if you break it, you buy it. Well, the one I have like is store. bigger, and so it's easier to hold. This one's kind of like a toy. It's a toy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an extra knee. Plum for Best Buy. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Are you picking a babysitter out there? Because we've got some important information. Yeah, How's that for a segue? Yeah, and you, you, really great good. job. Yeah. Um, but it can be a difficult job, so we brought in the ladies that know best to Shan Banner Moms, Laura Boyle and Amy Hatch. Amy, Laura Boyle and Amy Hatch. I'm kidding. Oh, you're <laughs> yeah. I have once introduced myself as Amy Hatch oh, before. Good. It happened. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So. Okay. Wow. So we'll just call you Laramie or something. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Good deal. Okay. So, ladies, what are some of the big factors in finding a babysitter that you can trust and you know, leave your kids with? I, I think that just go where you know. I mean, if you are, if your child is in childcare, oftentimes childcare providers will offer babysitting services. If your neighbor has a really nice, you know, college kid or teenager or whatever makes you comfortable, ask them. I mean, really, it just never hurts to ask. Ask around your friends. Sometimes they might have their kids might have aged out of the babysitting, so maybe they have someone to spent to spare. But don't poach. Don't poach. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> oh yes. yeah. You don't want to poach your friend's babysitter. You'll yeah. you'll pay for that in the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, my kids were little. I know we found one of our best babysitters because they she would watch them during the day at a daycare center, mm -hmm. and that kind of developed into a friendship. And we knew she the kids would be in good hands. But we went to another daycare center after we had moved, and they wouldn't allow them to babysit on yeah. the side. And I yeah. understood that too because they're afraid of. You know, you start to favor certain kids over others, or you mm -hmm. might do something, you might think yes. a little differently. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd be surprised that you can actually find really quality sitters. I've had great luck with Craigslist. People will often give me that look, like, really, yeah, you found really? your babysitter on Craigslist? <laughs> but it's true, if you if you word your ad carefully, okay. and you are strict in your screening, and you ask for references, you, and you, you might go through one or two before you find the right fit, but you, know, you might not be in a situation where you have a daycare provider you can ask, or a friend who has kids, and you you know, sort of it's sort of like the cold calling of babysitting, but it is something that you can do. And another factor is age. So I want to say, like, if you have a newborn or a maybe up to a, about a year old age, I mean, are you looking at somebody that's a bit more mature that mm -hmm. can handle situations better? I think so. I think you know, my preference would be to have somebody who was 18 or older handling my infant. It just, especially if I was going to be leaving them alone. Mm -hmm. If I was in the house, a mother's helper who's you know 16 or 17 might be reasonable. But I think if you're going to be you know out for extended periods, you want someone a little more experienced. And once they are in your home, do you do you set rules for these sitters? Do they have to you know follow by the, follow by the household rules as well? Oh yeah, Absolutely. I definitely <laughs> set expectations. I mean, we had someone in my home when my daughter was really little who was more like a nanny, and we set expectations that she would do some light housework, etc. You know, the baby slept a lot, yeah. Yeah. that kind of thing. But for a nighttime babysitter, all we ask them is, you know, clean up after the kid's dinner and make sure they brush their teeth and put them to Get bed. Them. I mean, it's so, you know, it varies by the situation. But another thing I was going to add to about, you know, where to find a sitter is that, you know, we're lucky we have like, what, 40,000 college mm -hmm. students here. So I know there's lots of people who may tap if they're an alumnus of a sorority. They may contact that sorority and see if they're anybody or a religious organization on campus if they have an affiliation okay. yes, so that's another way also. there's also a job board at the U of I that anyone can post on okay. great but again the key with all of that is really screening mm -hmm. really screening really and also really check. just set expectations because a lot of times you can have a sitter and you just may not be on the same page right. about what they're supposed to do or what your expectations of them are all right, all right. great information thanks, thanks for coming in much. tonight thanks well for if you want to find out more from these ladies go to shambanamoms.com we'll have their interview on our website later tonight. Are we going to pick a winner? Oh, yep, quickly. Right. Oh, but yay. You get to do that. Oh, All right. The winner tonight, <laughs> uh, the second prize is Sports Fanatics, so uh, Sports we still haven't heard from the first winner, so guys, stay tuned. We'll have to get another name pulled. All right, we're back after this.